Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodie and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health and your life. I feel very weird showing up with my hair in braids but I got them done because I'm going on this retreat next week and I wanted to not have to worry about my hair. And I'm actually starting to like them a lot more. When I first saw them, I was like, oh my God, I look bold. But yeah, here we are showing up anyway. So today's video, I actually wanted to respond to a comment I got on one of my previous videos about the skinny fat situation. I thought it was a really good comment to dissect because there's a lot to it and I'm going to be able to give some recommendations or kind of point out what you're doing wrong because I know a lot of you think like this and so yeah I'm going to put the comment up here so you can read it and I'm just going to dissect it all and kind of say what's wrong with certain parts of it or not what's wrong but what belief kind of structure needs changing especially when it comes to the skinny fat situation in order to lose your body fat and get a leaner tighter body i know the old me like 10 years ago would have looked at this comment and like resonated with everything including the eating disorder but we're not discussing the eating disorder today at all i am not giving advice on that so if you are watching this and you do have any kind of eating disorder don't watch the rest of it get professional help because that is what is going to help you, not this video. Anyway, the old me would have loved this video in terms of having someone point out how I was thinking and how I needed to think differently in order to get where I wanted to be. But as I already said, the eating disorder part we're not going to discuss today. So the next part of it is where we're actually going to begin. I went from 130 to 120 by being highly restrictive and doing a lot of cardio which resulted in me being skinny fat and that is the importance of weight training and eating enough food especially if you're not already overweight like going from 130 to 120 really tells me that this person from the start didn't really need to lose weight they needed to focus on body recomposition and part of that process is muscle building right so too many of you are worrying about weight loss when you really need to focus on building muscle and losing body fat. And if all you do is increase your activity and reduce your food intake, you're going to end up with your current body, but just a smaller version of it. And for some of you, that's fine. That might be what you want. But if you actually want a leaner, tighter, more toned body, then that's not what you want to do, right? You don't want to be cutting your food and increasing your activity unless you're increasing your activity by doing weight training and reducing the cardio but in general you don't want to be doing more cardio and eating less food all right so the next part of it is i tried reverse dieting to my actual maintenance and then started a deficit two weeks after getting to maintenance no <laughs> like if you get to maintenance stay there you do not need a calorie deficit to lose body fat especially if you're skinny fat and that is where so many of you go wrong. You get to maintenance, you stay there for maybe two weeks or maybe a month, and then you're not noticing any changes in your body. So you go back to what is comfortable, which is a deficit or what other people are telling you to do, not understanding that you are in a skinny fat body. You are not trying to lose weight. You do not need a calorie deficit. What you need to do instead, if you are eating at maintenance and you're not noticing changes in your body, something is wrong with your training. Whether that be you're not following a structured program, whether that be you are not pushing yourself hard enough in your workouts, or maybe you're not being consistent enough, maybe you're just not being patient enough as well. Because just because your measurements don't go down in one month or at all, doesn't mean that you can't be making progress. As I pointed out in a previous video, I think some of you don't actually have a lot to lose. Like your waist is already tiny, right? So. You are going to have to look at photos. You are going to have to focus on your strength. You're going to have to focus on how you are feeling. And that is going to indicate whether you are making good progress or not. All right, so the second part of that, after getting to maintenance, doing five full body weight training workouts on a 300 cut of calories. So again, this person is doing what they've already done, just trying to do it in a different way, expecting a different result, right? 
adding more workouts, five full body weight workouts a week is too much. You need proper recovery. If you are actually training hard enough in your workouts, you wouldn't be able to do five full body weight workouts a week. That is a lot, especially if you've also cut calories. You need to be giving yourself energy to push yourself hard enough in your training. So you need to switch your thinking from having to do more and eat less to eating more to fuel your training and pushing yourself harder in your workouts. And that is what is going to drive your fat loss progress. The next part, after three months, I haven't seen any progress. So three months is actually a really good amount of time to start seeing some changes. Given you have been super consistent with everything, that is really important. And you can't just be like, oh, most of the time I'm eating right and I'm getting most workouts in each week. It has to be, I'm getting every workout in each week. I am giving every workout 110%. If you're going to the gym just to be there, that's okay once or twice in a month. But if that is every week and you're not actually giving your workouts everything, you can't count those workouts. That doesn't count as being consistent. And then if you're tracking your food all week, but then on the weekends you kind of let loose and you don't bother or you're a bit more flexible, that doesn't count either. That is not being consistent. You don't have to be perfect 100% of the time, but 80 to 90% of the time you need to be. And every single weekend, I can't remember what the percentage is, but if you actually calculate it, if you are going off track every single weekend, if you are missing one to two workouts or not really putting any effort into one to two workouts every single week of a month, that's gonna be, you're not being consistent. Like you're not getting to that 80 to 90% consistency. But as I've already pointed out, the problem in this case is not enough food to fuel that muscle growth and not training properly. I can tell already this person is not training properly if they are able to do five full body weight workouts a week. All right, so the next part, I don't know if it's me eating too much protein. No, that is definitely not the case. If you have a skinny fat body and you want to be making progress, eating enough protein is so important. Again, being consistent in it. And then also like going from 120 grams to 150 grams, it's not really a big deal. Like you can't really eat too much protein. So that is not an issue at all. And then so the next part, not eating enough calories because I haven't weighed myself. That's actually fine if you haven't weighed yourself, but like, how do you know if you're eating enough calories? We already know you're not eating enough calories because you have chosen to be in a deficit. If you're eating enough, then you should be making progress in your training. You should be making progress in your body as well, in terms of your photos or in terms of your waist measurements or how you're feeling. In this case, it is a matter of not eating enough, but then you also need to make sure you are training properly. You can't just eat more and train the same and expect to actually get a result. Your food has to align with your training to make progress. All right, so the last bit, do you have any tips on what can help me get toned deriving from being skinny fat? The biggest tip here is to change your mindset around what you need to do. You need to focus on building muscle and that is how you're going to lose body fat. And to build muscle, you have to focus on your training. You have to be following a good program. You have to be putting enough energy into that program, getting stronger, using tempo, using proper form, taking proper rest periods in your workouts, and then also in between your workouts, fueling those workouts and your recovery with enough food. And what you need to remember as well, if you're actually eating at maintenance or eating a bit more food than what you would be in a deficit, you're going to burn more energy, not only during your workouts, but also during your day-to-day -day life because that is one part of your energy expenditure, right? Your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and that grows up when you start fueling your body properly. So you get the balance right between having enough energy, but not too much. This doesn't mean you need a deficit. It means you still need to eat around maintenance, but that number needs to be right. It needs to align with your training. You need to be monitoring your biofeedback, your energy, your stress levels, your hunger, your motivation, all of that. And that is going to kind of tell you whether that number is right or not for you. I think my biggest tip is to stop trying to lose weight, stop trying to be in a calorie deficit forever, because 
If you're skinny fat, you don't need to worry about that. You need to have patience. You need to focus on building muscle and really you need to learn how to work out properly. And that can take time as well. This differs for everyone. If you've never worked out before, you have to give yourself extra time to learn how to work out properly because working out with intensity as in actually pushing yourself hard enough to lift a good amount of weight. And I don't want to say the heaviest weight possible because that is not what I mean, but you need to be pushing yourself to lift a weight where that last rep or two is a struggle. It should feel really hard. Speed of contraction should slow down because it is that hard. And that is how you know you are training with enough intensity. And it's a process to learn how to push yourself to do that. It comes with training experience, honestly. So if you don't have a lot, and if you've never followed a proper structured weight training program before or a strength training program, then it is going to take more time to learn how to understand that. It's very different to training high intensity interval training style where you're really just trying to get your heart rate up and sweat more. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. If you would like to see more, please subscribe. And if that is the case, I will see you in the next video.